Hi, this is Carrie Shell from On Point Quilter. This week, I was working on a customer's quilt where I needed to insert some background fills around some applique shapes. I thought this was a perfect opportunity to try out the creative fill function in Art and Stitch. To start my creative fill, I need a shape. And since I am working on a Halloween quilt, I thought a man in the moon type of shape would be a fun, uh, repeatable shape. So I'm going to go to my backdrop tool. Earlier in the day, I found a, um, a design that I thought would be worth um, trying to trace at least portions of it. And so I'm going to open that. And I'm going to use the curve tool to do my tracing and the curve will give me smooth points with every click of the mouse other than when I also have the control key down and when I control mouse click then I actually get a cusp point so I will start um, by um, doing some curve points and then when I get to here I'll control mouse click and I'll get a cusp and I'll go back to curves and a cusp there and I'm going to veer a little bit here and make my cusp there okay and now I've got a shape that I can start to play with here and I liked that curve there um, that one I'm going to try to follow that shape just a little bit more. And I'm just going to delete that point. I think I'm going to delete that point also. And I want to change that to a cusp. I didn't quite do that correctly. And I'll delete that point. I like to try to do these designs with as few of points as possible because it makes for, I think, a smoother, smoother curves. So now let me erase that back backdrop and take a look um, and see if there's anything else I just want to clean up a bit. So once I've got my shape done, I can now select it and I'm going to actually copy it first, Control C, Control V, and I'm going to move one out of the way just so that I have it. Um, I think this is a little bit big, so I'm going to also bring this, bring the size down. And to do a creative fill, now what I'd like to do is um, right click, and I want to do a power copy. And so it, when I power copy, it will uh, re repeat that, that uh, space. And in a creative fill, it's important to have at least one point and, if possible, even a couple of points that are overlapping, um, it, particularly if you're planning to use the merge function, which I am planning to do here. Now, just to show you the difference, that's the power copy. If I actually um, select one of the shapes and I right click and I use the power copy end to end, just want to show you the difference. And it really has to do with the starting point of the copy. In this case, it's actually the end point where the other, it was sort of gravitating through, um, through that. Now, if I don't like where something ends up, I can select it. I can rotate it still. And I like that better. I also want to take this shape and I want to do um, a flip of it. And I'm going to try and do, again, another power copy sort of end to end here. And this would be going, um, going the opposite direction. Okay, I've now power copied a lot of items. I've uh, tweaked a lot of them by either rotating them or squeezing them. Uh, I'm just seeing one more here that I need to fix. 
And so I'm going to just bring that down and just fit that into the space a little bit better um, than it is, and maybe even a rotation on it. So they're, they all fit in pretty nicely with a little bit of uh, little work. And I do want some overlap because that's the way I am going to be able to merge all of these designs together. So now that I've got all of this done, I can do Control A, I can right click with my mouse, and I can select Merge. And when I look at, there's one item in under the artwork. So I took a picture of the block that I needed to put the creative fill around uh, with my tablet. Uh, it's not a great picture, but it will work. I do want to edit it before I bring it in. Mainly I want to crop it so I can... Um, so I can properly size it and it's a little distorted because um, I didn't use my tripod I just took it but again probably close enough to get a you know uh, to do my creative fill so once I like that I am just going to save it um, uh, I think I'll just throw this one on my desktop so I can quickly find it and I'm going to call it um, Halloween. So now I can go back to Art and Stitch and now when I uh, select the backdrop tool I want to actually load another backdrop and so I'm going to go to my desktop I'm going to find my Halloween block and I'm going to open it and I measured the block and I know that it is 19 inches so I'm going to go to the properties tab and I'm going to change the width to 19 so I'm going to apply that and um, what I can do is lighten this actually uh, that's too much but enough so I can see it but enough so I can also see my creative um, grid okay so I'm going to now go back and select my creative grid and it's not completely filling the block but I can either add more or I can just increase the size a bit of okay I think I that looks pretty good so I'm going to go with that and now what I want to do is actually trace the hat so for this, for the pro when I go back to the select and the properties, and I go to the sequence view, I actually am going to hide my creative fill for a minute, just so I can get something that I can uh, see what I'm working on. I will use the curve tool, and I had snap to points on, so I just took that off, so I got rid of all those snaps, and I'm going to. Um, do like I did with the man in the moon. Basically, I'm using the curve, and when I get to this point, it's the control click, and I'm just going to follow the shape around the hat. And you can see how fast it is to draw a shape. Once I've got that done, um, I can close the shape, and then for the other one, I'm going to draw an oval around the spider. So I'm going to pick up the circle tool and do that. To reshape my oval a bit, I can just drag the corners and I will do my cutout with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my backdrop tool and lighten this a bit. And I do want to clean up in particular that first shape. And I just did, you know, some zoom ins while I'm there. Um, it's not in too bad a shape.
So I now have two shapes and for the creative fill now I'm going to put a block first around the entire shape and now what I'm going to do is I've selected that block I'm going to make a second one control C control V so it's right on top of the first one and I'm going to change the color on that one I think I'll try to use that green on it okay so on the sequence view you can see I've got um, two shapes I've got two blocks and I have my creative grill creative fill once I have my shapes done I'm now ready to apply the creative fill. So I'm going to unhide it and you can see that it is covering my shape and I'm going to actually take all of the shapes and I'm going to apply uh, something different than the creative fill for a color for that. So now what I want to do is select one of the boxes and the hat and I'm going to right click and I'm going to select transform artwork and exclude and that's going to combine the box and the hat now um, I'm going to select that and select the artwork and I'm going to right click and I'm going to select creative fill Now, when I did that, if I click on my creative fill, it sort of split everything apart. So to get it all back together again, I need to select it, right click, and select merge. And now I'm back to one shape. I'm going to take that creative fill, I'm going to go to the properties tab, go to transform, and I'm going to reduce it to 99% and select apply. Now if I go back to my sequence view, I'm going to take the second box and the um, oval and I'm going to do the transform artwork exclude again, which combined those two shapes together. And the second shape, I'm going to take the creative fill and control click on the, on the second shape right click and do create a fill on that. Now what I can do is select the creative fill and again if I hit that plus it broke things apart so I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to merge it back together. Now with that creative fill I can apply my running stitch and there are a couple of starts and stops um, and I'm just going to accept that um, and um, know that I will have to just have those starts and stops when I'm sewing it out. Thanks so much for watching. For additional videos and tips, please subscribe to my weekly newsletter at www.onpointquilter.com.